and Julia Sondu, showing you where development is happening. Please come and join us. All the kids that uh, try to attack my uh, soldiers and my unit, they are not with us today. Dozens of fists, wearing Israeli military uniforms, penetrated into the Sufa army post on Saturday, October 7, 2023. Under attack, the nail soldiers there barricaded themselves in the dining hall. When the commander of the Karakal Battalion, Lieutenant Colonel Or Ben Yehuda, was rushed to the site, the tests were already in control of the post, intelligence data was only partial, and firing was heavy. First, she distributed her forces around the post. They totaled only 12 men and women, but together they eliminated every test who came in range. However, in order to free the barricaded soldiers, they needed to force their way in. That battle lasted 14 hours. Tests fired at them from the guard positions and from behind the pillbox, but the Karakal fighters, with determination and solidarity, and with air support from the Israel Air Force, beat back the hostile forces, cleared the terrorists from the post, and freed the barricaded soldiers. Orr had fought courageously to preserve the lives of her troops and of the soldiers locked inside the post. Throughout the hours of battle, and even under attack from dozens of tests, she inspired her troops with confidence that they would succeed in halting the attack, even when, during the fighting, she heard that in the battle at Kibbutz Berry that same day, her deputy, Major Avi Hobalashvili, had fallen. He was 26 years old. Lieutenant Colonel Or Ben Yehuda was the first female cadet in the Geffen Battalion and the first female squadron commander in the Le Havre program for combat cadets at the officer's training camp. In 2015 she was decorated by the commander of the Southern Command and received the Chief of General Staff's citation for excellence after foiling the incursion of a terror squad at the Israeli-Egyptian border. The 33rd Karakal Battalion is an infantry combat battalion of the Israel Defense Forces, one of the three fully combat units, alongside the Lions of Jordan Battalion and the Cheetah Battalion, in the Israeli military's Paran Brigade that are composed of both male and female soldiers. It is named after the Karakal, a small cat whose sexes appear the same. As of 2009, approximately 70% of the battalion was female. History Cadets' first day in the Karakal Battalion prior to Karakal's formation in 2000, women were barred from serving in direct combat. The unit has since been tasked with patrolling the Israeli-Egyptian border. It took part in Israel's unilateral withdrawal from the Gaza Strip in the summer of 2005. Karakal Battalion engaged in combat on September 21, 2012 on the Egyptian border, following the infiltration of a group of tests. Responding to a radio report of the attack, in a firefight a female Karakal infantry soldier killed a terrorist, who was wearing a suicide belt. In October 2014, a jeep of the battalion was attacked by militants from the Egyptian border with gunfire and an anti-tank missile. Two soldiers were injured. One of the injured, a female officer, Captain or Ben Yehuda, nonetheless dismounted from the jeep and returned fire kill one militant in the firefight. In November 2017, Karakal officially became part of the border array, alongside the Lions of Jordan Battalion and the Cheetah Battalion, and replaced the Green Beret with a light yellow and brown camouflage. While Karakal is a mixed-gender battalion, it has been 70% female since 2009. It is part of the 512th Sagi Brigade of the Southern Command. The unit badge incorporates the Sagi Brigade badge with the addition of the Karakal Cat. At Sufa, Israel, Karakal Battalion, under the command of Lieutenant Kol. Or Ben Yehuda, claimed to have eliminated nearly 100 Hamas tests during the 2023 Hamas invasion on southern Israel. The battalion suffered minimal casualties and no deaths. Israel is one of only a few countries where military service is compulsory for all able-bodied female citizens. Under Israeli conscription laws, the Israel Defense Forces IDF, may draft recruits from three communities, the Jews, the Druze, and the Circassians. As the latter two communities are less populous, their women are not required to serve. 
Women from the Jewish majority are not exempted from the conscription laws, but serve for slightly shorter terms than male conscripts. All women who are exempted from the conscription laws may still enlist voluntarily. Jewish women who are called up for military service may apply for an exemption on humanitarian, religious, or certain legal grounds. Those who claim such an exemption will typically be redirected to Sheret Lumi, the alternative means of national service. In 1999-2000, an amendment was made to the Women's Equal Rights Law of Israel by which men and women became fully equalized, although separately, in the Israeli military apparatus. Until 2001, female conscripts served in the Women's Corps, or Chael Nashem, Chen, Hebrew Air. Eh. After a five-week-long period in basic training, they could serve as clerks, drivers, welfare workers, nurses, radio operators, flight controllers, ordnance personnel, and course instructors. As of 2011, around 88% of all IDF roles were open to female candidates. Concurrently, women were enlisted in 69% of all military positions available to them. Amidst the 2014 Gaza War, the IDF stated that fewer than 4% of their female soldiers were enlisted in combat positions, such as infantry and helicopter, fighter pilots, and that they were instead concentrated in a variety of combat support positions. On 26 May 1948, David Ben-Gurion officially set up the IDF as the military force of Israel. On 18 August 1948, Mandatory conscription began for all childless Israeli women who were born between 1920 and 1930, regardless of whether they were single or married. Due to a rapidly growing need for ground forces during the 1973 Arab-Israeli War, women were needed in field roles. 6. According to Rina Bartal, then chair of the Israel Women's Network, roles for women beyond technical and secretarial support only started to open up in the late 1970s and early 1980s due to manpower shortages. Since then, a few women have earned ranks higher than Colonel. In 1986, Amira Dotan, then head of the Women's Corps, became the first female Brigadier General. In July 2018, Female IDF Captain Ornaman ordered a Patriot missile battery to shoot down a Syrian drone and fighter jet over the Golan Heights, which earned her a military certificate of appreciation. In 2000, an amendment to the Women's Equal Rights Law of Israel with regards to military service states that the right of women to serve in any role in the IDF is equal to the right of men. The amendment, drafted by female lawmakers, grants equal opportunities to women who are found to be physically and personally suitable for a job. This is the end of our program today. See you on Intervlog same time tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get new video updates. Thank you for watching Intervlog. Thank you.